Welcome to Lighting the Educational Flame, created and produced by educator and author Mark Hoberman, owner and director of Grade Success Tutoring. Mark will be joined by Susan Brender, CEO and host of The Susan Brender Show. The purpose of this program is to offer our listeners a variety of stories dealing with many interesting topics surrounding education. It is our hope that students and parents alike will benefit from the wide range of topics, including study skills, test prep, anti-bullying, sports, music, and more. We hope you enjoy our show, Lighting the Educational Flame. Hello and welcome to the talk show, Lighting the Educational Flame, brought to you by Great Success Education. I am Mark Hobman, and my co-host, as always, is Susan Brender. Susan, how are you doing today? I'm doing just fine, as I always say to you, and every time we do this, this is a very exciting thing for me because we offer people so much education, and it's a great show, and I hope people listen to it because it's, you know, you and I, we love this interview, um, interviewing. So, thank you. Yes, we have a great guest today who's not only an NFL, former NFL uh, uh, player, but he's also involved in a business that really services people who are injured, uh, head injuries, uh, and uh, he's really great at talking about how they have these injuries, how they can be safer, not just on the professional level, but the high school and even collegiate level. You know, I've had friends who have had uh, children who have had several concussions. And I know that each time you get one, the next one is easier to get and usually worse. Very serious. And uh, these injuries can be life altering. You know, Mark, it's an interesting thing that you brought that up because years ago when I was with CNBC, I did an interview uh, with a sports doctor who talked all about concussions. And one of the things that happened at that particular time is they, they reinforced the fact that um, football can be a very dangerous uh, sport and they needed new helmets, things that would protect their oh, heads. Sure, sure. And they Technology. accomplished it. Right. So what we're going to hear from uh, our special guest today about what they're doing to try to cut down and help people who've actually suffered from multiple concussions. So uh, very excited to have him on. We're going to bring him on now. Our guest today is former NFL star and entrepreneur, Wes Chandler. Wes, welcome to Lighting the Educational Flame. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Oh, so nice to have you. I got to tell you, I almost don't know where to start. Uh, pro athlete, successful businessman. I guess the place, best place to start is where do you find the time, the drive, and the passion? Uh, well, I think that it's people, the humanitarian effort in who you are. And when you come up in the world of sports, for the most part, uh, you, you get to appreciate what people think of you. People make you who you are as stars uh, because there's so much following and so much influence that you have on not just fans, but, but their kids. And so you have an impact on communities, not just your own, but globally, you have an impact. And so because of that, you find the energy down within to want to always give them the best that you have to offer because you know someone is watching you. You know, I'd like to know, Wes, give our audience an understanding of how you started and why did you, um, you know, this is a competitive field. So the question becomes, how did you get into it? <laughs> I think you got, you got you game. Out, I'll tell you, you that much. <laughs> very, very innocent uh, in the game of Sandlot. <laughs> well, you, you know, came a long way from Sandlot, I'll tell you. <laughs> as a young kid, kid, like in many neighborhoods, you, you grow up playing playing pickup games. Uh, I grew up in the projects uh, down in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And so certainly every weekend, primarily on Sundays, we had, uh, we had games. Um, and sometimes we played the kids from across town. For the most part, it was about touch football, two hands uh, on the butt. And then it eventually got to where, because we didn't have flags at that time, it got to be where it was sandlot, real taiko football wow. without pads. I was about to say without equipment. Yes. And then, of course, growing up at a time when there was still segregation, uh, you were not, you know, we didn't have football leagues. Uh, okay. And then when it started to turn just a little bit, um, we had opportunities now to go and participate in Pop Warner football leagues. And so now the, the instinct of being able to go out and compete and play with some of the, your friends, and, you know, all of a sudden you have that passion. But it's, again, it's still just about 
you know, competing with your friends and playing with your friends. That's all it is, is a great camaraderie growing up. You don't really realize it until you get maybe today's game is a little bit different. Right. But when we were growing up, it naturally, it was about it, I could be a fireman, a lawyer, a doctor, uh, a policeman. That was what you wanted to be when you were growing up. Be like my grandfather, be like my dad. But the ambitions to be a professional athlete, you were not exposed to that. No. Yeah. You know, politics plays a very big part in what you do. And Mark, you, you know that today there's a discussion about systematic racism. I'm sorry I'm bringing this up, but I think it's very important. And this is important for you, Wes. Are you, you know, the way it was years and years ago, and there was a problem getting black players to be on teams. So there's no question about that. But the question becomes today. Do you think that there is systematic racism or are you very pleased with the fact that we've come a long way? We've come a long way, but we have a long way to go. I think that when it comes to managerial situations, um, uh, directorships, I think that that's where the problem lies. It's not, it doesn't lie in the athlete because God places his hand on every individual, regardless of your ethnicity. But at the end of the day, um, African-American athletes, um, they strive on being better than their, the, the kids they grow up with. Right. That's just the competitive balance is, is how I grew up. Right. I wanted to be better than everybody in my neighborhood. I didn't want to be in that same, in that same circle of talent. I wanted to prove that I was better than the rest, but yet we were still all friends. So we competed at a high level at an early age, but we always shared a, a pop at a time when, you know, you could share that, you know, one pop together among friends and there was no real issue. Um, but as, as time evolved and for me, just seeing the changes in, in the world of sports where an example, the National Football League, where it's primarily dominated by African-American players, yet the managerial uh, control of, of these teams uh, it's different. It's sort of like the black quarterback. For a long time, they had this, they had this stigma that they could not adapt, they could not learn, they could not lead a franchise. And today, some of the top players in the National Football League at that position happen to be minority minority players. Uh, but it has not transcended into the coaching aspect, the managerial aspects of the business concepts. And mind you, even as a player, football is a business. The moment oh. you get into it. Even in college, it's a bit. Even college it's, football is a big business. College. Your image and your likeness, uh, the marketing aspects of all of that, what you do with your financials, all of that, that's business. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, 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 mentioned, you mentioned the tightness and the camaraderie among your friends. And then it starts to go up and up and up. So tell us about... That was the sandlot, so to speak. Tell us about the transition and your experiences with college and then the NFL. Well, the transition for me was, 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 was different in the simple fact that here you are, here's segregation. Now here comes integration, my, my seventh grade year of, uh, of middle school, and then on to high school where you recognize that there is a talent. Now I'm accepted a little bit more simply because of God's gift to me. OK, but even though I established some bonds, uh, some, some 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 bondship between friends growing up, some of my best friends happen to be all of all nationalities. OK. But I, I grew up in that in that era where here's segregation. People don't know who you are. People, people could care less who you are because of their upbringing of their great grandparents, their grandparents and their parents because of their own personal beliefs, right, wrong, or indifferent. That's the world I grew up in and at the time. So moving on from junior high, from middle school to high school, then into the University of Florida in 1974, um, I, was the, I was the fifth class. Well, talk about it, uh, talking about that plan, quite honestly. You know, I have to tell you, as a father and an educator, I think you're involved in an incredibly 
important venture now. So could you tell uh, our viewers about your involvement uh, with the biotechnology company WCTE and what work WCTE, you're doing with them? WCTE was a company that I, that I founded for the simple fact that having played this game at the highest level and going through at a time when the protection, the equipment was not um, as um, the technology in the equipment uh, wasn't what it is today. And we played the game for the love of the game, not because of the money, of, of course, but we played it for the love of the game and the fact that it was a golden opportunity that God had bestowed upon a lot of us, okay? And and for me, having played it, I never thought that years later, the deteriorating injuries that I sustained as a professional athlete would come back to haunt me. So one day I am in life after football, being a productive citizen in society and no longer th thinking about the game of football. I'm signing a medallion signature in a bank. And in all of five minutes, I could not sign my name mm. to a document. And my life as I knew it changed. It changed in the simple fact that I realized that I was suffering from uh, central nervous system issues. Mm. I ended up having Parkinson's tremors in my in my left hand, and at a time in which I didn't understand what it was, just signing my name, I thought it was just your hand goes to sleep sometimes and you yeah. just can't yeah. write or you got nervous issues. I go home, I take a nap, I wake up, still have a problem. Three months later, I still have a problem. Then I fall into the characteristics, um, some of the epidemics in our society that comes to haunt you. I started having uh, mood swings because I was dealing with this. And I, you know, I played the game of football, a gladiator sport in which I'm not vulnerable. I can't be. I've played a gladiator sport all my life. Uh, I'm aggressive in the, in the sense that I played the game of football. Um, and all of a sudden, then... The mood swings went to memory loss wow. and from memory loss to depression because I couldn't beat what was happening to me. How old were you when this happened, Wes, when this first happened? This to you? originally started to happen uh, in 2011. Okay. Wes, um, Muhammad Ali also suffered from Parkinson's disease. And um, I, I guess people didn't really understand the implications of what would happen playing a, a game like football. And I'm just wondering if you even thought that there was a problem that would take place later on in your well, life. Let, let me explain it this way. The game of football creates opportunities for those individuals to leave this game at a later age, yet down the line in their lives, they may be faced with one of five epidemics in our society. Parkinson's, ALS, CTE, dementia, and Alzheimer's. And that's what concussion comes from, or TBI, traumatic brain injury, injury because of the repetitive head trauma caused, uh, that causes and creates brain inflammation. And that's what it leads to. And so this whole thing about concussions, the reason why it gets so much attention is because football is the one place where it happens all the time, constant. Outside of boxing, it's known as punch drunk syndrome, right. repetitive head trauma. It also happens in the military. It's, it's related as a TBI, as PTSD, where these concussive forces of bombs, they don't have to be hit by one, but just constantly going on and, and ringing the, the brain because the brain sits in, 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 in liquid and it sits in space. It's not stationary. So that's the, that's the results of what happens. And as time goes by, here's what happens. Unfortunately, for some in their early lives, like Aaron Hernandez, who passed away at the age of 27 due to the characteristics. Think about it, sporadic behavior, depression. Depression leads to suicide. Okay, these are all the characteristics of what comes from traumatic brain injury or uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE. 
He died at the age of 27, but he had the brain of a 67-year-old man. That's awful. That's aging. And so, therefore, it simply tells you that CTE is nothing more than accelerated Alzheimer's. Well, you know, I, I, I saw just... As it turns out, Tommy, two nights ago on TV, they were talking about concussions among uh, high school and college athletes. I was talking to my friend about this, actually uh, my former uh, college roommate. And uh, I said, well, you know, you know, the report said that there are more concussions during practice than actually in real games. And I was thinking in a common sense numbers way, well, ov obviously there's a lot more time on the practice field than on the playing field. And he said, well, I know you're talking to Wes Chandler uh, in a couple of days, ask him what he thinks. He said, cause I think that there are more doctors on the field and more people watching them because I saw a video of you and you said, hey, forget about the concussion. I had a concussion and I played with the concussion. So, yeah, I, I, I so why is it so several. prevalent? Why is it so prevalent in practice? It, well, in practice, you don't necessarily have a doctor there. Right. They, they sometimes come by on the professional level, mm -hmm. on the level as well, um, because they have their own practices. So therefore, they don't spend their time, even though they may be uh, associated or affiliated with an organization or a franchise. Simply yeah. put, they have their own practice. So they're not just there all the time. You can expect to see them on game day right. or every now and then you may see them come through on a daily practice. But that's the reason why you have certified trainers because they act as that doctor or your medical staff during the times in which you are practicing. And what happens is he's just a phone call away or she's just a phone call away when something traumatic happens to a player. Um, Wes, you know, today um, you're in a different place. I mean, obviously you're an entrepreneur and you're doing very different things but you must have a message for our audience because you've gone through a lot and you've seemed to come out of it, even though you're dealing with some physical problems, but there's got to be a message that you can send to our, our audience, if you will. I, if, if there was one message, uh, it would be about this, this, this epidemic that we're dealing with right now, um, uh, COVID-19 and the impact that it has on us as a society. And the one thing that I take from it as a former athlete, uh, a former team member, I understand teamwork. And I know what it means to be a loyal teammate. Right. And we are in the greatest game ever played. I played in the Epic in Miami, Chargers versus Dolphins. Uh, a game that will always be remembered as one of the best games ever played. This is the biggest game I've ever played in my life. Wow. Oh. This one right here. This is a, the, the toughest opponent, COVID-19, that I've ever seen. And you are my teammates, just like others in our society are teammates. And the problem that you have when you, are, when you have game plans a game plan is put together to defeat your opponent. And you have to execute and carry out individually your assignment to help the team be, in, be put in the best position to succeed. Yep. When you stray away from what you know, you've been told, and what the plan calls for, there's a breakdown on one side of the ball, either defensively or offensively, and a team scores. And if you keep doing it and not have the discipline, there's a blowout. Much like what you see when, when uh, we're under siege with all of the, the rises in uh, infections. Yeah, spiking. The, the spiking is, is nothing more than a blowout because guess what? Our teammates are not doing their part of the deal. They're not executing the plan. CDC like coaches have laid out a plan for us. Yep. And it's our responsibility. If we really want to win, it's to execute that plan. Any deviation from that, of course, you know the end result. So yeah. that's my message is be a good teammate. 
It's not about you. It's about the people around you. That's a great message and a great analogy. And I wish that should be a commercial every day for two months. And I, and I have to ask, as, as a parent, uh, in keeping with that, I would ask you, let's say I'm a parent and my son or daughter plays football in high school. How can Wes Chandler tell me what's the best way to keep my child safe on the football field? Well, you, injuries are going to happen. It's the nature of the game. You cannot play the game scared because if you do, you're definitely going to get hurt. Right. You can't play to protect yourself because if you do, you will never reach your maximum potential as, as a player or as an athlete, girl or, or male or female. And so I've been a high school athletic director before. Um, and in all of my days of playing, and I'll deviate just a little bit from, from the main topic, is the fact that we never touch the ball without getting our education uh, responsibilities done first. We had a books and balls program at a prep school called Father Lopez High School in which I was the AD as well as the high school football coach. But none of our programs were allowed to participate in sports without getting our homework done. Because the biggest focus is on when, you, when someone participates in your program on the high school level, you want to give them some tools that will last them for a lifetime. Because no matter what sport they're playing and they can go on to be the best tennis player, golfer in the world, at some point that comes to an end. Yep. And you have to go back into society and function as an individual. So the educational process is the most important process of all the accomplishments I've had in my life, and I've been fortunate, and I knock on wood to say thank, thank God for blessing me, was being a two-time academic All-American at the University of Florida. That's, that's huge. That's huge. Okay, so I am a huge believer in the educational process. You know, we, WCTE, we have a preventative, okay, product called Neurostilbin, which is an anti-inflammatory. And it's to keep the brain from having this inflammation flare up um, and to protect the cells of the brain. So, yeah, there's a lot of parents who don't, especially mothers, Susan, that don't want their kids playing, you know, physical, especially football. Right. And there was a study that was done just a couple months ago where the uh, emergency room rate was down 35% uh, for the simple fact that parents had stopped their kids from playing contact sport. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to tell you, Wes, um, it's interesting that you mentioned me and my son. My son always wanted to be a baseball star, but actually he wanted to be on air. And that okay. was something he accomplished and it was his passion. And he actually succeeded in doing something that he's passionate about. And now he's on Sirius XM. Now, if you had kids, and I don't know whether you do, but if you do have kids, what would you say to them? Because you've been a star, you, you've gone through a lot, and I guess you have a lot of advice that you could give them. What would that advice be? The, the first thing I was ever asked by my son was why didn't I name him Wes? or Wes, uh, Wes Chandler III, right. it was because I wanted him to have his own image. I wanted him to walk in his own shoes and not in mine. I did not want him to be compared to who I was or anything that I was able to accomplish in God's gift. I was, I'm here as a parent and always have been to support him in any endeavor that he chose to, to get involved in. Whether it was football, if he didn't want to play, that was 100% fine with me. And if he wanted to go off and do something else, get in the medical field, uh, be a young entrepreneur, I'm going to support him 100% because that's his chosen endeavor and not mine. And that's the thing that parents have to be careful of. It's a simple fact that many times, innocently, we try and guide our kids to what we want them to be or become. And that's not their ambition and that's not where they are. But unfortunately, sometimes they do it only because guess what? Because they, that's what they think you want them to do. And in order to satisfy your well-being and your thought process, 
they go along with it. Whether they are not good at it or unsuccessful at it or not, it's because they are taking up what some parents have done or fell short upon in their life, and they're trying to live it vicariously through their kid. And that's unfortunately. So you let a kid do what they want to do. It's like I never tell a child to, to go to this university because I went to that university. Wrong thing to do. It's his life, her life. She may not ever, he may not ever accomplish anything near. Good point, because you know you use the term innocently. Sometimes the parents innocently. How many videos have we seen with parents fighting at football, Pop Warner football games, hockey games for, for eight-year-olds? And uh, it's just, you know, so, mu so many great words of wisdom and such great advice. But I have to ask you, I know you're not done yet. The <laughs> football, the college star, the NFL star, what you're doing to help people with brain injuries. So what is next for, for Wes Chandler? Well, uh, WCTE will be partnering uh, with a company, Action Fund Extreme Enterprise Sport, uh, DBA AFX, uh, which will be a global uh, arena football league. And the reason why we will partner is in the simple fact that when you have sport and youth participating, as well as professionals participating in a sport, the safety and health protocol is very important. And that's what we are about. We at WCT are about the safety and health protocol of all individuals who participate, even in soccer, even in, in the military as well, uh, certainly in boxing and any sport. Gymnastics has the highest, has one of the highest rates of uh, female concussions sure. than any, any of the sports uh, matched because they oftentimes tumble and they fall uh, and even in the cheerleading, they throw them, they miss them. Yep. And they come down with concussions and no one thinks at that time other than they don't go beyond the thought of hmm, they got deemed to have a concussion. Right. They'll be back. WCTE in itself, I'm um, determined to get the neurostibulant out there as a preventative um, because you can take it before an event and you can take it after an event as a preventative. We it's, don't not, it's, not a it's not a prescription? It's a, it's a uh, dietary supplement and it's not a prescription. Great. You can go to the website and they can order it um, at www.wcteinc.org. It's available. A lot of the biopharmaceutical approaches for what uh, WCTE does is on that website. There are testimonials on that website. Uh, and certainly uh, for me, uh, I'm, I'm always trying to do humanitarian things outside of just trying to create jobs and, and AFX, more importantly, trying to be the best, uh, uh, best person I can possibly be to my neighbor and friend that I don't even, that I haven't met yet. Oh, Wes, unbelievable stuff. Susan, and I cannot thank you enough, not just for your expertise, but your incredible advice. Uh, it sound, you sound more like a teacher sometimes uh, than uh, a professional football player, even businessman. And you really helped uh, bring some things into the forefront with, with the advice that you gave. So thank you so much for that. I do appreciate thank that. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I, I enjoy the conversations. Us too. Uh, oftentimes more than not, because I think that there's, there's more to the athlete than, than the games that they play. And the level yeah. to which they play, play it. There's so much more to them. Uh, yes. So absolutely. We're learning that now, obviously, with you. Uh, just want to remind the viewers uh, to reach out to us on social media. You can look on Great Success on Facebook and Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. And you can also find me, uh, Mark Hobman, on LinkedIn. Again, thanks so much to Wes Chandler for being with us today. Uh, Susan, as always, thank you. And thank the viewers, you. don't forget to turn into our next show. This is Mark Hobman thanking you for watching Lighting the Educational Flame on the Great Success Education channel. Have a great day. Wes, you're the best. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank, thank you, you so Wes. much. And thank you for having me. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you for listening to Lighting the Educational Flame with Mark Hoberman. To contact Mark, email him at info at gradesuccess.com.